Hi everyone, it's Dan Rowe from Maritime Geothermal, makers of Nordic heat pumps. And today we're going to take an in-depth look at one of our newest products, the High Temperature Cascade Water-to-Water -water Heat Pump, or the WC Series. Uh, we've made water-to-water -water heat pumps for many years, uh, geothermal heat pumps, which we call the W Series. And uh, recently we introduced the WH Series, which can make hotter 160 degree water if you have a warmer source available, like a warm well or a waste heat loop. Uh, this new uh, WC series heat pump combines the W and the WH series and the result is a geothermal heat pump that can put out 160 degree water using ground loop source temperatures. So that's right, a geothermal uh, loop heat pump that can heat water for high temperature heating distribution systems like hot water baseboards or uh, cast iron radiators. So let's take a closer look at the WC series and see how it differs from other Nordic water-to-water uh, -water heat pumps. Uh, first, what is a water-to-water -water heat pump? Uh, this is a device that takes heat from a lower temperature liquid, usually a ground loop, and puts that heat into a higher temperature water, usually for use in space heating. Uh, the possible range of water temperatures on both the source and sink sides are determined by the characteristics of the refrigerant used, uh, specifically its pressure temperature relationship. Uh, what type of water-to-water -water heat pumps does Nordic make? Uh, here you can see the uh, W series on the left, which is a geothermal uh, standard kind of water-to-water uh, -water heat pump that we have manufactured for many years. These use a 410A refrigerant, and they also use a geothermal ground loop uh, normally, which are usually designed for a coldest temperature of around 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but can get as low as 25 degrees Fahrenheit at their coldest uh, points. The hot water temperature on the indoor side for hydronic heating is limited to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius with the W series. Now the WH series you see here on the right, which was uh, recently introduced by us, um, uses 134A refrigerant instead of 410A, just like in your uh, car air conditioner. Uh, this has the effect of shifting the allowable source and sink temperatures up. So you need a source temperature between 46 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 8 and 32 degrees uh, Celsius. This could be a process or gray water, uh, the buffer tank of an existing geothermal system, or an open loop, uh, like an open loop water well in warmer Canadian locations, which is basically anywhere except for the prairies or, say, northern Ontario, where they have colder groundwater. So this sounds great, but uh, what if I want a water-to-water -water heat pump that... Uh, makes hot water on the indoor side, 160 degree water, but also uses a geothermal ground loop. And uh, that's where the w series, uh, WC series comes in, which is the subject of today's uh, walkthrough. Uh, this is a cascade style heat pump using two different refrigerant circuits with both 410A and 134A refrigerants. It's a non-reversing, so it can be used in a heating only system or a two tank uh, heating cooling system. Uh, uniquely, there are actually two different condenser options on this series. There's a single wall condenser for space heating use, and there's a double wall uh, condenser available for dedicated domestic hot water heating, should you want to do that. Uh, the, unit, uh, the WC unit does have a higher cost due to its two refrigeration circuits, so more components. Uh, and a good rule of thumb is that it's going to cost about 50% more for a, a single wall WC unit over a traditional uh, W series unit. Uh, of course, that, uh, that premium is only about 10% extra cost, 10% uh, or less, on a job that includes uh, installing outdoor ground loops. So uh, let's look at a summary of the comparison between these uh, different Nordic water-to-water -water heat pumps. Uh, in the first column here, you can see the W series, uh, the geothermal standard. It has one refrigerant circuit. Uh, the coldest temperature on the source side is uh, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 4 Celsius and it can output about 120 degree water or 49 degree, uh, degrees Celsius on the indoor side. The COP will uh, range from about 3 to 6, um, uh, which is a very good COP. Uh, uh, for those aren't, who aren't familiar with that, uh, it just means that you will use, uh, let's say if your COP is 3, you'll use about one-third the electricity to heat your home uh, as if you were using electric resistance heat by itself. Uh, the WH series, you can see here in the second column, it still has one refrigerant circuit using 134A. Uh, you do need a source temperature of uh, 46 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but you can output 160 degree water on the indoor side. And the COP will range from 2.2 to 6, 
a little bit lower if you're doing the maximum temperature lift uh, than a W series unit because you are doing uh, more work. Uh, the WC series, uh, that has two refrigerant stages and you can see here it's kind of a, a combination of the two, the W and the WH. Uh, the coldest uh, source temperature you can use is 25 degrees Fahrenheit, but you can, uh, from that uh, colder source temperature, you can output 160 degree water on the indoor side. Uh, the COP, if you're doing the maximum lift, is about, you know, very comparable to a WH uh, at 2.1. And uh, it only goes up to about 2.8, which is uh, something we've, we've found in our uh, laboratory testing of the WC. It doesn't have nearly the sensitivity to uh, how much lift it's doing. Um, so the COP uh, is a little bit lower on the, on the high end, but uh, it's still very suitable for uh, uh, an application where you have a, a cold source temperature and you do need the indoor uh, hot water for uh, uh, some kind of high temperature indoor distribution system. So uh, being a uh, CAD guy, I can uh, show you some views of uh, the actual unit here. Uh, this WC series is available now in sizes 16 to 80 or uh, nominal 1.5 to about 6.5 tons. Uh, some smaller unit sizes might have a parts lead time of uh, several weeks uh, just as we get going here, but the uh, larger sizes can be built in a few days just like our other types of heat pumps. Uh, as I mentioned, there are single or, or double wall condensers available, uh, depending on whether you want to do space heating or domestic hot water heating. Uh, the 16 size uh, is an unusual size for us, but uh, we've added that lower size um, because with a double wall condenser, that's what would be required to heat domestic hot water in an average house. So you'd be doing the, the to do the job of a domestic uh, water tank. Uh, these units are non-reversing only, and they don't have desuperheaters. Uh, they use our Gen 2 uh, electronic control board, which is uh, used in uh, several of our other new products. Uh, as you might know from previous walkthroughs, uh, this board has a built-in aquastat uh, functionality, so you don't need any external probes or thermostats to control the water temperature in the buffer tank. Uh, it's got a user interface here uh, to vary and uh, look at the most common parameters while the machine's running. Uh, it's got a, uh, you can connect a laptop to it to ac access many more functions like uh, data logging and uh, real-time graphing. And uh, it's got a built-in interface with building control systems, so if you happen to be on a job with BACnet, uh, the, this uh, board will communicate with it. It has an outdoor reset function, uh, so this is a, a function which only turns up the buffer tank water temperature when it's needed in colder weather to maximize COP. Although, as I mentioned, uh, the WC series is less sensitive to uh, the, the temperature lift um, for the COP than, than the other water-to-water -water series. Uh, over here you can see, if we look at the side of the machine, you can see that there's uh, electronic expansion valves, which you can see here. Uh, these, are, as opposed to a, a mechanical TXV, uh, these allow the lowest possible superheat to maximize the heat, heat pump capacity. And uh, you can see here that on the uh, hot and intermediate heat exchangers, we've uh, used braised plates for, to minimize the approach temperature and maximize the uh, hot water temperature. Uh, you'll notice on the ground loop side, we still have the uh, heavy duty TurboTech coaxial uh, heat exchanger for uh, re really good uh, robustness and uh, solids tolerance. If we look at the uh, other side of the machine, you can see the two compressors. These are, of course, are scroll compressors with uh, double grommet isolation, just like our, our other units. Um, you can see here that the uh, two circuits are clearly separated, and uh, on the machine they'll be clearly labeled as well, so that there'll be no confusion about which, uh, which circuit you're, you're looking at when you're looking inside the machine. On this side, you can see there's an oversized electrical box with, uh, the, again, the two circuits uh, clearly laid out. Uh, so there's no confusion about which circuit is which. Of course, the wires aren't shown in this view. All right, that's the end of the tour. Uh, I hope you found this uh, interesting. The uh, WC series uh, is available now, as I said, and you can contact us through our website for information on pricing and lead times. That's uh, nordicghp.com. Uh, to stay up to date on this heat pump and the other uh, models we're excited to release from time to time, uh, you can sign up uh, for our newsletter on our website. Uh, you can connect with us through these. Uh, oh, maybe I should uh, show you how to connect with us. There we go. Uh, 
So we look forward to hearing from you and uh, thanks for listening.